This is Revelation chapter 12, and we're going to find out who the woman is spoken of in this chapter. Uh, Revelation 12, 1 says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. If we look at Genesis 37, it looks like the first verse identifies the woman as Israel. Genesis 37, 9 through 10 says, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made ab abatience to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? So the son in Joseph's dream was Jacob, his father. The moon was Rachel, his mother. And the eleven stars were his brethren. And that matches the sun, moon, and stars of Revelation 12.1. Not only this, but Israel is referred to as a woman in the Bible and as a wife in the Bible. Isaiah 54 and verse 5 and 6 says, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called for the Lord hath called thee as a woman, forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. So there you have Israel referred to as a woman and as a wife. And then in Jeremiah 3.20, Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me. O house of Israel, saith the Lord. Once again, Israel referred to as a wife, which would be female. And then if you look back at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Travailing in birth is a common phrase when it comes to talking about the time of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation. If you look back in Isaiah chapter 13 verses 8 and 9, it says, And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So this woman is with child and about to give birth. This also matches a verse about Israel in the Old Testament. If you would like to turn or stay in the book of Isaiah and look at 66 and verse 8. And if I'm going too fast, just pause the audio until you get to the verse. It says in Isaiah 66, 7 and 8, Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So you see how it keeps referring to a woman and a wife and she. So Israel is referred to as a woman in the scripture. We went and looked in Genesis 37 where it talks about Joseph's dream it talks about Jacob being the sun, which is his father. It talks about Rachel, his mother, being the moon. It talks about his brethren being eleven stars. 
And then in Revelation 12, 1, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So it seems Israel is the woman. Uh, it seems the man-child has to do with Israel suffering and a rebirth of the nation in the time of Jacob's trouble. The man-child represents a nation, and this nation will rule with a rod of iron. If you read Isaiah 60, it talks about the future glory of Israel and how the nations will come to them. In Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 3, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Now look at verse 12 and see the re result of those who don't come to them. Isaiah 60 and verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So if you don't come to Israel, you'll be wasted. Revelation twelve three, and that is in the future. And Revelation twelve three, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns, upon his heads the great red dragon is identified as satan in revelation 12 9 he started out as the anointed cherub he fell and became leviathan the great red dragon and you can read more about him in ezekiel 28 and job 41 the seven heads represent seven primary world kingdoms historically and the seven heads are babylon under Nimrod, Egypt under Pharaoh, Assyria under Sennacherib, Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar, Media Persia under Darius, Greece under Alexander, and then Rome under Caesar. Revelation 12.3 also mentions ten horns. And you read about the ten horns in Revelation 17 and verse 12. It says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These ten horns are kings who will give their kingdom to the Antichrist. And then in Revelation 12, 3, these seven crowns are the seven kings of the seven primary world kingdoms, which was Nimrod of Babylon, Pharaoh of Egypt, Sennacherib of Assyria, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Darius of Media Persia, Alexander of Greece, and Caesar of Rome. And then verse 4 in Revelation 12, it says, And he, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So we have the woman, which is Israel. We identified the woman by looking at Genesis 37. And here in verse 4 it says, So we have, we have stars falling. And stars many times in the Bible is referring to angels. As we saw in Revelation chapter 120, Matthew 25, 41 talks about hell being prepared for the devil and his angels. So Satan has angels. Many of the angels that fell are in everlasting chains under darkness, as it says in Jude 1, 6. And the ones who left their first estate to fornicate and go after strange flesh, like the people did in Sodom, they're in chains down there in hell. And Revelation 12.4 seems to hint that more angels are going to fall. 
So more angels are going to be deceived by Satan. And I believe this verse is yet future. Many people think this verse is in the past. And these angels will be the visitors from outer space that Hollywood has been preparing you for all these years. So Revelation 12.4, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Satan is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour the child like he wanted to kill Jesus Christ when he was born. Just like Pharaoh wanted to kill babies himself. And I don't believe anyone knows for sure who this child is. But any abortion is satanic. Pharaoh did a wicked thing by killing all those babies in the book of Exodus. God said it is wicked to make your son or daughter to pass through the fire in the Old Testament, meaning sacrificing your children to a false god. But in the throughout the Bible, you'll see this thing of killing kids, and it's always associated with the devil. Killing babies is wrong, whether they're born or unborn. It's still murder. Revelation 12, 5 says, And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. This makes it look like it is referring to Jesus Christ. And if someone thinks that it is Jesus Christ, then I wouldn't really argue with them. If it is Jesus Christ, then we are shifting all the way back 2,000 years compared to the previous verses. Even after the book of Revelation has been future for pretty much the whole thing, it's if it, this is Jesus Christ, then you have to shift back 2,000 years. Jesus Christ is going to rule with a rod of iron, and he was caught up to God into his throne. But saints in the time of Jacob's trouble who overcome will also rule with Jesus Christ with a rod of iron. And so Jesus Christ isn't the only option for the man-child in Revelation 12.5. Let's read it again. She brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So that could apply to saints in the time of Jacob's trouble as well. Revelation 2.26 and 27 says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end... To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So you see, the saying in the time of Jacob's trouble that overcomes and keepeth his works unto the end, it says, To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So you see the tribulation saint, time of Jacob's trouble saint, if he overcomes, keeps his works, he'll get power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, just like the man child in Revelation 12.5. Also notice that a time of Jacob's trouble who overcomes will sit, will get to sit with God in his throne. Revelation 3.21 says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. And that matches Revelation 12.5. It says, And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And then if you look at Isaiah 66, verses 6 through 8, it talks about the man-child as a nation. It says, A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. The man-child seems... To be the rebirth of Israel. If it is Jesus Christ, 
then the woman would have to be Mary instead of Israel. And that is another reason I don't think that it's Jesus Christ as the man-child. Because Satan doesn't chase after Mary in the wilderness for three and a half years either. Like he does this woman in Revelation chapter 12. So this man-child in Revelation 12.5 has something to do with the suffering of Israel and this nation, Israel, coming to God. Let's look at Revelation 12.5 again. And she brought forth, Israel brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Notice the child is caught up to God and to his throne. Yet the woman is still on earth and flees into the wilderness. So this has to do with a partial rapture of some of Israel. Consider how the 144,000 are caught up in Revelation 14, 1 through 4. They are standing on the heavenly Mount Zion with the Lord. And then Revelation 12, 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And this is 1260 days. The place prepared is the rock city, Sela Petra. She is going to be fed with manna that falls from the sky, just like they were in the book of Exodus. Hosea verses 14 and 15 of chapter 2 says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyard from thence in the valley of Achor for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. So, God's going to protect Israel and Rock City Petra, and they're going to be fed with manna that falls from the sky. And then Revelation twelve seven says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. So Michael has angels under him, and the devil has angels under him. This proves Michael isn't afraid of Satan. In the book of Jude, Michael turns Satan over to the Lord, for the Lord to rebuke him. Satan may not necessarily have that much more power than Michael. As you can see, he doesn't prevail against Michael and his angels. Michael fights Satan because he sticks up for the nation of Israel. That's Michael's job. Daniel 12, 1 says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. This war between Michael and Satan is fought in the first heaven, because that was where he was cast down, cast down to as the prince of the power of the air. Satan was cast down and referred to as the prince of the power of the air in the book of Ephesians. Uh, Revelation twelve eight and 9 says, And prevailed not, Satan prevails not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Satan is cast out five times in Scripture. He is cast down the first time when he sinned, way back when he was the anointed cherub that covereth. He reflected the light of God when he was around his throne. Then in Luke ten seventeen through 18, you read about Jesus saying, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Jesus had given the disciples power to cast out devils, so it seems when this happened, Satan lost a lot of his power and was cast down yet again. Then in Revelation 12, 9, the verse we are currently studying, Satan is cast down a third time into the earth. And this is yet future during the time of Jacob's trouble where he will be cast into the earth. He will at this time enter into the man of sin, the Antichrist, who has just recently received a deadly wound. He will resurrect as the son of perdition. 
the son of perdition, will be someone indwelled by Satan himself. That's the Antichrist. So the Antichrist, the man of sin, gets a deadly wound. He resurrects with Satan, indwelling him as the son of perdition. In Revelation 21 through 2, an angel gets the privilege of casting Satan into the bottomless pit and binding him there for a thousand years. And this will make the fourth time he is cast down. Then the last time you have Satan cast down is when he is put into the lake of fire. So Satan falls five times. But Revelation 12, 8, 9 says, And prevailed not, neither was their faith neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great red dragon, or the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In Genesis 3, the serpent is a representation of Satan, and Satan is the crooked serpent. Isaiah 27, 1 says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So you have Leviathan associated with a serpent, a crooked serpent, and a dragon. Obviously the Leviathan in Job 41 is the devil. And this verse matches Satan with Leviathan. So the Leviathan, who is king over all the children of, fr of pride, as it says in Job 41, is actually Satan himself in his fallen state. Satan in his natural state is no longer an anointed cherub, but a great red dragon that is in the sea. And when I say sea, I'm referring to the one above your head in Psalms 148 and verse 4. Satan is the accuser of the brethren, and he wants to kill the nation of Israel. He hates Israel. He wants you to hate Israel. And at this point, you have not only Satan cast out into the earth, but also his angels. And this is going to be a horrible time on the earth. In Genesis 6, you have the sons of God who came down to earth and fornicated with the daughters of men. The Bible says the last times will be as it were in the days of Noah. And that was Genesis 6 when that took place. When the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. So you have history repeating itself. Remember the book of Hebrews which says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. And I believe this is a warning to those in the time of Jacob's trouble primarily. That's not to say an angel couldn't show up today, but you wouldn't know it was an angel even today. A Revelation 12.10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Notice the loud voice says, Now has come salvation. This is probably because Revel, or Romans chapter 11, 25 through 26 is about to be fulfilled. And it's also talking about Israel. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. The loud voice not only says salvation, but also strength. Who is the strength of Israel? That would be God. First Samuel 15.29 says, And also the strength of Israel. Notice that capital S. Will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. So notice the capital S in strength, and he is called a man. He is not a man that he should repent, because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He won't repent when he already has the thing fixed and settled, and already knows exactly what he's going to do. In Job chapter 1, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. He goes around searching for dirt on the saints of God, and this is why I worry about these guys who go around trying to find dirt on other Christians. 
it sounds like they're acting like the devil. And Satan had access to heaven even after he fell the first time. He just couldn't stay there like he used to. Revelation twelve eleven says, And they overcame him, which is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives into the death. Notice that even in the time of Jacob's trouble, the saints can't get victory over Satan without the blood of Jesus Christ. They love not their lives into the death. They're going to know the devil's method of execution is beheading. And they still won't be friends with the world and enemies of God. They'll love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. They'll be fed up with this present evil world because they know Satan is the God of this world who blinds the minds of them which believe not. They also know this world is ending with a big bang where the elements will melt with a fervent heat. And they know that she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. You see these celebrities who love the world up until their death. Then they call on God. But what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? These times of Jacob, the time of Jacob's trouble, saints would rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. James one twenty seven talks about keeping himself unspotted from the world. And this is because they don't want to take the mark and get the noisome and grievous sore which will spot their skin with leprosy. If they keep from taking the mark, they'll keep themselves unspotted from the world. They don't want that leprous spot. They aren't going to the, deny the name above every name, which is Jesus Christ, in order to worship the name of the beast. They're going to stick with the name which is above every name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why worship the one who deceiveth the whole world when you can worship the one who died for the sins of the whole world? So they will be hunted down and slaughtered because of their rejection of the world system and their intolerance. Funny how the people screaming for Christians to be tolerant are the most intolerant people alive. This world is full of hypocrisy. Revelation 12.12 12 says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He knows he has a short time because of the three and a half years that are left. See how the devil is working today and he isn't even working without limitation. He will be working without limitation in the time of Jacob's trouble. But right now, he's actually limited about what he can do. In the last half of the time of Jacob's trouble, he will be working without restraint. Look at what he did to Job. And he had limitations on what he could do. He had to get permission for the things he did. Imagine what he is going to do to the inhabitants of the earth when he won't have limitation. The heavens will be rejoicing because Satan is kicked out. But the earth will be feeling the effects of this outcast, the devil. It's like when you have a bad roommate and you are always trying to get rid of him. You rejoice when he leaves, but you know someone else is going to have to deal with that person. We're not going to have to deal with the devil pretty soon when we get raptured out. But there's still going to be some people that will have to deal with him. Revelation twelve thirteen says, And when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. As we said before, the woman... Is Israel, you can find this out by looking back in Genesis 37. And throughout time, all that live godly shall suffer persecution. Satan persecutes the woman, which is Israel. And Christians are suffering today. The devil is the instigator of all this suffering. And in this future time, it will be at an all-time high, the persecution. Remember, the woman is Israel. And Satan hates Israel. That is why I'm weary of people who 
seem to have a hatred for the nation of Israel. Israel is wicked today and doing wicked things. But remember, although they are enemies of the gospel, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Hate the sin they are doing, but don't turn into a replacement theologist, teacher, or an anti-Semite. Revelation twelve fourteen says, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So she is going to be nourished for 1260 days. They are going to be away from the face of the serpent. And I am sure they won't be able to stand the sight of his face. Uh, what is carrying them away? Two wings of a great eagle. Now if you want to say this is a literal bird, I am fine with it. Job 39.27 says the eagles mount up at his command. And there are pictures and videos of eagles being able to carry humans. But it seems that it is that this is simply the Spirit of the Lord carrying them into the wilderness. The Bible says in Ruth 2.12, The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. Now, I don't believe the Bible teaches God has literal wings, but the verse in Revelation said to the woman, were given two wings of a great eagle. It seems she is being carried by the Spirit of the Lord. Compared to John's experience in Re Revelation 17.3, where it says, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast for the names of blasphemy, having said seven heads and ten horns. So the same way he was carried away in the Spirit in the wilderness, the woman will be carried, most likely be carried this way. And then if you read Deuteronomy 32, 9 through 12, it says, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. And then if you look at Exodus 19 and verse 4, it says, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. So I don't think it's plains or anything in Revelation chapter 12 that carries them into the wilderness. It's the Spirit of God carrying them to another location. Revelation twelve and or Revelation chapter twelve, fifteen and sixteen says And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So have you ever seen the disaster movies where the big wave is coming up and casting a shadow on the buildings of the city? Maybe it will be like that. But remember in Numbers when the earth did a new thing and opened its mouth to swallow Korah and all that appertained to him. Because him and his people went against Moses. This could be a similar situation where the earth opens its mouth and swallows the flood. God keeps his protective hand on his people. This will also be during a time where Moses is on the earth again with Elijah as one of the two witnesses. Revelation twelve seventeen says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So these are Sabbath-keeping Jews who keep the commandments of God. Matthew 24, which is obviously referring to the end times and the time of Jacob's trouble, says, Pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So you see the Sabbath is coming back in that future time period where God is going to be using signs again. The Sabbath is a sign to the nation of Israel, and it's the time of Jacob's trouble. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation, God is dealing with Israel, not the church. And Paul says in Colossians, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moons, or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come. 
but the body is of Christ. So the sh- so the Sabbath day is a thing to come. We don't keep the Sabbath because it is si- is a sign between God and Israel. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, God will once again be dealing with Israel, and they will honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. They are going to keep the commandments of God. It's going to be like it was under the Mosaic Covenant, but with a twist. They also have to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They're going to read Hebrews and see Jesus Christ for who he is and believe on him. But this has been Revelation chapter 12.